Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and uh, we have a very serious situation that's happened in northern Israel. Uh, it is a strike that has been blamed on Hezbollah in the uh, in Lebanon for striking in the goal, uh, excuse me, near the occupied Golan Heights, killing a number of uh, youth uh, ages from 20 years old to, or 10 to 20 years old. Uh, there were uh, actually 11 killed, not 10, but 11 killed and Israel is blaming Hezbollah. Now, oddly enough, though, the Lebanese militant group categorically denies any involvement in the strike. Now, believe me, Hezbollah is never shy about admitting they have taken out people, even if it includes children, uh, because, you know, for them, it's another victory against Israel. But in this case, they're not accepting responsibility for this attack. This really seems eerily, oh, almost like we're looking at October 7th all over again, but just nowhere near the magnitude. Uh, and as you know, Netanyahu just was here in the United States uh, just the other day uh, as he was speaking before Congress. Uh, these are members of the Senate that were heading over to the House of Congress there to listen to Netanyahu's speech. Uh, Wow, it's like he's a celebrity or something when it comes to speaking uh, in the United States here. But what was he doing? Garnering up support for a war against Hezbollah. So I kind of find it very odd that all of a sudden there's a strike hitting a soccer field that kills children. And of course, it is a tragedy. Believe me, it is a tragedy for there to be deaths of children, women, actually for any human being for that matter, in wars anywhere in the world. Uh, let alone whether it be Israel, Gaza, for that fact, uh, nearly 20,000 children have been killed in that onslaught so far. And now uh, the IDF really up in arms over the fact that these youths were, were killed there. And by the way, I'm going to try to avoid the disturbing images that we do have here. Uh, but if it, one pops up, I do apologize for that. But I want to make sure that you're aware of this. Uh, that there are could be disturbing images, but we will try to avoid those uh, for the sake of those that could be viewing. Anyway, the IDF's uh, operation systems, they claim that the rocket came uh, from a village called uh, Chiba in southern Lebanon. And uh, like I said, you know, like I said, it's very odd that at the timing of this strike, really. Uh, now, I know that there's always an exchange of rocket fire back and forth. The IDF does claim that uh, they, the Israel had stru struck a command center uh, in Lebanon, uh, I think just the day before, killing uh, several people in that attack, and that they felt like this was a, a retaliation. And But more specifically, the IDF command believes that this soccer field was targeted by Hezbollah. And uh, now whether or not they have that sort of uh, technology or not, I'm not really sure. Uh, this is where I've got to be careful on the video footage here. This is the actual rocket attack uh, happening there. Uh, just moments there. That's what happened there. I will not show the images further from this point here. Uh, but there are very, very sad situations. There are many young adults there losing their limbs, uh, especially lower limbs, and no doubt dying from those injuries in several cases there. Uh, this article here, uh, Israel says Hezbollah rocket kills 11 at a football ground, vows response. Uh, and uh, a rocket attack on the football ground in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights killed 11 people, including children on Saturday, Israeli authorities said, blaming Hezbollah and vowing to respond against the Iran-backed Lebanese group. Now, granted, regardless of Hezbollah denies it or not, all ears are going to be deaf at this point because Israel is looking for that reason, uh, Netanyahu now has more of an, a reason to launch that strike. And let's grant it, let's say Lebanon did actually do it because there is that possibility. I can't say they did not. I just find it rather odd that they're denying responsibility. Like I said, Hezbollah is not shy of actually saying that they did carry out such a strike. Uh, at any rate there, uh, by, oh, by the way, I didn't realize I was already at the end here. Well, I'm not quite at the end. Let me go into other things and we'll drop back into that in just a moment. Um, there, this is another uh, footage here sent to me from Nick Bryant. Thank you, Nick, for this. Uh, this was showing uh, moments after the strike that hit the soccer field there, uh, like I said, that, that killed and injured so many people there. Like I said, uh, 11 is what they're saying as far as killed. I think another 10 injured in that blast. 
that hit that soccer field there. Uh, and then also another thing I thought was interesting too, um, and that is Trump actually in this uh, uh, Jimmy Dore show uh, video here shows that Trump actually claims that Israel is one that is not very easy to get to the table to make a deal. Now, at first, he's going to act like it's not the case, but just listen in. It's kind of interesting to catch this. Of course, I definitely no supporter of Trump at all. Uh, he is, you know, too wishy-washy on his ways. But, uh, but anyway, listen in. On this video of Trump saying that one side of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict doesn't want to deal. What side do you think that is? The answer just may surprise you. Or will it? Here we go. It just never ends. But the key is a lasting peace. You have a lasting peace. First thing you have to ask, do they both want to make it? I have a real question as to whether or not both sides wants to make it. I have a real question as to one side in particular, whether or not they want to make it. Well, I don't want to say that right now. I think one side actually would like well, a deal, I and I think the other one maybe doesn't want a deal, to be honest. I don't want to say it. No. Look, we show our cards too much in the good. I wrote The Art of the Deal. We show our cards too much. So if I get into that, I don't want to say this and that, and then they'll come and they'll say, well, Trump is biased one way or the other. I think there's a chance that you could probably make a deal if you had a real deal maker, if you had somebody that knew what he or she was doing. In my opinion, if Israel wants to make a deal, I think a deal could be made. I think a lot is going to have to do with Israel. A lot's good. Look, it's going to have to do with both sides, but a lot will have to do with Israel and whether or not Israel wants to make the deal. There you go. So why? Oh, let's listen to this next part. Why does Trump sound like the most reasonable candidate for president on this issue right now? <laughs> I mean, it's a low bar, but he just <laughs> vaunted over it by virtue of not saying the lockstep Zionist horseshit that even RFK Jr. says. But this is what I've been saying about Trump. His flex is to find a deal. It's like, let's find a deal. And he's saying one side doesn't want that deal. Which side do you think that is? Well, here he's going to reveal it here. He wanted to make a deal more than Netanyahu. And I will be honest, uh, I had a great meeting with him, Abbas, right? I had a great meeting with him. And we spent a lot of time together, talked about many things. And it was almost like a father. I mean, he was so nice. Couldn't have been nicer. And after meeting with Bibi for three minutes, I looked at him and said, you don't want to make a deal, do you? And he said, well, uh, 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 and the fact is, I don't think Bibi ever wanted to make a deal. Why? Well, there you have it right there. Now, the problem is, though, that's probably why Trump never got reelected on his second time. Undoubtedly, he's decided to be a good boy now. And that's what I'm concerned about. He's decided to be a good boy. So don't believe it just because that is said. That I'm really, really disturbed, especially, uh, hopefully, we'll get to bring out uh, in a very interesting interview here, Tucker Carlson and a side that he took on Noahide laws recently. But then again, remember, and before we bring that message out separately, the Bible says it'll be so close that the very elect could be deceived. So there's a lot of good people out there that could easily buy in to these seven laws. The law of the kings, mind you. Think about it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, what I did pop up there a second ago, uh, this here happens to be our Patreon channel. Just loaded a new video on there. Can what you speak affect you? Uh, or how does what we say affect the body, the name of the video uh, that I posted there on our Patreon channel. Great way to, uh, to help support the broadcast here as well as going to our website, israelinewslive.org, uh, and you can donate right there online. Makes it very simple. We appreciate your support tremendously. Uh, in fact, our website just has that new video. Most of you have already seen it. You should know who the Antichrist is now. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.